Hey everyone, welcome back to Crafty and Curious. My name is Nicole, and today I'm going to teach you how to do the seed stitch. Let's head over to the work surface and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a chart for the seed stitch on screen right now. So you can take a little screenshot of that, you can write it down, you can do whatever you need to do with it. Um, these stitches are also very, very basic, so you'll find them in every single stitch dictionary that exists out there. If you don't have a good stitch dictionary and you're just starting out with knitting, highly recommend that you go and get yourself one that works for you because they are just so much fun. They open up so many doors for you. So basically today what I thought I would do is I would show you the stitch, tell you a little bit about it, and then work on a little mini swatch to show you how it works up. So I've got the needles that I created these swatches with here. I'm using double pointed needles. You don't have to worry about that. I'm using them the same way you would use straight needles. I just wanted to use double pointed here because they're shorter and they're easier to film with basically. So don't worry about that if you don't have double pointed, you don't need them. And then I've got my yarn here that I'll be using as well. So to talk about the seed stitch at first, you can see that it creates this really beautiful, almost grid-like pattern here. Really, really pretty. Now the great thing about the seed stitch is that it is not only a stitch that works up flat, so that makes your life a lot easier because your work is not going to be curling as you're working with it, but it's also reversible. So that's really, really nice if you want to have an all over stitch pattern that works for both sides of a garment. So the seed stitch can be worked on an even or an odd number of stitches. It really doesn't matter. Make sure that you check out that chart. That'll give you a much better idea of what you have to be doing, depending on if you have an even or an odd number of stitches. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and just do an odd number of stitches. That makes life a little bit easier because if you do an odd number of stitches, whatever stitch you start with in row one, you can start with the same stitch in row two. Whereas if you're doing an even number of stitches, you kind of have to alternate it between knit and purl. Funny story, I just tried to show you that I cast on nine stitches and it turns out I cast on 10. So I can't count, <laughs> learn from me. Okay, so here we've got our nine stitches are cast on. You can use whatever cast on method you like. And I'm just gonna show you how to do the seed stitch with an odd number of stitches. It's super, super easy. Basically all you have to do is you do knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way down the row. You flip your work and you do the exact same thing. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Now the only difference that you're going to see if you're using an even number of stitches is that if on your odd numbered rows, so rows one, three, five, etc., you do knit one, purl one, on your even rows, you're going to want to start with purl one, knit one. That's the only difference between using an odd number and an even number of stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and show you on these nine stitches how to do the odd number of stitches seed stitch. Again, it's super, super easy. So we've got our nine stitches. I'm going to insert my needle for a knit stitch and grab my working yarn. And we're just going to do that easy knit one, bring the yarn around, purl one, knit one, purl one, and we're just going to do that all the way to the end of the row. I'm fumbling around slightly because, fun fact, I'm wearing fake nails for the first time in my life at 25 years old, and I'm not used to knitting with them. <laughs> I put them on last night before bed filed them down a little bit. They're still a bit rough, but it's making knitting interesting, I'll tell you that. All right, so we've got our first row done. Doesn't really look like much yet. We're gonna flip over our work like that, and we're gonna work on row number two. Now remember, we're working with an odd number of stitches. And when working with an odd number of stitches, you just do the same thing as you did in the first row. So on row two, we're going to start with a knit stitch. And then we're going to do a purl stitch. Basically, we just kept doing the exact same thing as we did for the first row. We did a knit and a purl, knit and a purl, all the way to the end of the row, and we can start to see a little bit of that seed stitch forming. So I'm going to go ahead and do row number three now. And again, because we're doing an odd number of stitches, we're going to just always start with that knit stitch, and then do a purl, and then a knit, and a purl all the way down. And I'm gonna do a couple of rows of this so that I get to the end of row four. All right, so we've got four rows here done. 
and we can see that the seed stitch is starting to take form. So we can compare this to our swatch. And you can see those little like V's and bumps are starting to emerge, right? So I wanted to talk a little bit about those V's and bumps. So basically, what you're doing in the seed stitch, when you create a knit stitch, you create a little V. And when you create a purl stitch, you create a little bump on whatever side of the work that you're working on. So the whole point of the seed stitch is basically to alternate V's and bumps. So if in the previous row you did a bump, then you want to do a V on top of that bump. If you did a V in the previous row, you want to do a bump on top of that one. So here you can see that we always start with a little bump here. And so that's why on each new row, we start with a knit stitch because it creates a little V. And then we move on to a purl stitch, which puts a little bump on top of this V here, etc., etc., etc. And then if you're doing this with an even number of stitches, that same thing holds true. You're going to always want to put little Vs on top of bumps, and little bumps on top of Vs. So if you ever forget, oh no, where am I? Should I be knitting? Should I be purling? You can actually look at your work and say, well, okay, I've got a bump there, so I need a V, so I'm going to put a knit stitch there. Or I've got a V there, and I need a bump, so I'm going to put a purl stitch there. And that's just the intuitive way that I like to think about seed stitch. And that's how you do the seed stitch. It's simple and it's versatile. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, look forward to more videos in this series of simple knitting stitches. If you enjoyed this video, also don't hesitate to like and subscribe for future videos. Also, drop a comment down below if there's any other stitches you'd like me to go through. I'd be happy to hear from you. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!